Hi there, this, in this video I'm going to uh, just go through correlation. So um, we are now uh, down here. So if you look at the 3.3.2 section in the specification, um, we can uh, think that a business has um, now collected some primary and secondary market research, we've got some qualitative and quantitative data, we've uh, used a sample to collect it. Now that we've got some data, it's going to be important to interpret that data, and that's what this section is all about. So, um, the first thing you need to know about is correlation, um, and correlation occurs when there's a relationship between two sets of data. So. Here are some examples of uh, data where there may be some correlation. So, um, an increase in promotional spending and an increase in brand awareness. We would hope that as we increase our promotional spending, people are more aware of our brand um, and we would want to go out and test that. Um, we may well see an increase in the staff training budget and then a fall in the level of complaints. Um, if our staff training is effective, it will make our workers more skilled and therefore there should be fewer cause for concern from customers and we would hopefully see a relationship between that level of uh, staff training and the quality of the product and therefore higher quality product, uh, fewer complaints. Um, finally, we may see um, a relationship between our competitors' selling price and our own sales. As these competitors' selling price goes up, perhaps our um, sales will also increase as uh, consumers find our product to be more competitive. So, um, just a warning uh, before we get into different types of correlation. Um, there is a famous saying, correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. So um, there's a famous example of this um, in terms of uh, flossing your teeth. Um, and uh, there tends to be quite a strong uh, positive causation, uh, correlation between those people who floss their teeth and life expectancy. In other words, people who floss their teeth tend to live longer than people who don't. Now, is there a um, correlation between those two things, i.e. is there a relationship between those two variables? Well, yes there is, because as you floss your teeth, you live longer. But does that equal causation? Uh, so the famous saying is, uh, correlation doesn't equal causation. In other words, it may not be the fact that people are flossing their teeth that is causing them to live longer. Perhaps um, the sort of people who floss their teeth are also the sort of people who eat a healthy diet, engage in exercise, get enough sleep, um, don't smoke or drink to excess, um, and therefore they live longer. Okay, so um, just before we get into this, it is worth saying, um, you know, and you, you could use this as an evaluation point in an exam. Um, does does this strong uh, apparent relationship actually exist? Um, and you can criticise the data. It's quite a good way of gaining uh, evaluation marks. So, um, getting into uh, some of the relationships, a positive correlation occurs when two sets of data increase or decrease together. So you can see um, that as one set of data increases, so does the other. So this could be our relationship perhaps on uh, this uh, axis here, the uh, vertical axis, we've got our advertising spending and on the horizontal axis down here, we've got um, our sales, and we would hope that uh, the more money we spend on advertising, uh, it's effective, and therefore the more sales we make. So that's a positive correlation, the data is moving in the same direction. Here we have a negative correlation, which occurs when the data change in opposite direction. So this time, perhaps on the uh, left-hand axis, we've got our price, and down here we have the level of demand. And uh, you can see when we have a high price, 
we have a relatively low level of demand and when we cut the price the demand increases. Okay, so this is our classic demand curve represented by a negative correlation. As price goes up, demand falls, whereas if we cut our price, demand rises. The data are moving in opposite directions. So, <clears throat> once we've identified um, the relationship between the variables, positive or negative, <coughs> we would want to see the strength of that relationship. So how do we do that? Well, we can have a strong relationship or a weak relationship. A strong correlation occurs where there is little deviation from the line of best fit, and a weak correlation occurs when there's a large deviation from the line of best fit. So let's have a quick look at that. Um, <coughs> here's our strong positive correlation. Now you can see here, now that I've put in some data points, that um, the line of best fit runs through the middle, but there's very little actual distance from most of these um, data points from our line of best fit. There's little deviation away from the line and therefore the strength of the data is relatively strong. Now let's compare that to a weak correlation. Now there's definitely still a relationship here between these sets of data but you can see there's um, a much wider gap on average between each data point and our line of best fit. So, although there's still a relationship between these sets of data, um, it's much weaker than our strong relationship where the data is all clustered relatively close to our line of best fit. Um, and uh, we may even find that there's absolutely no correlation, uh, no, obviously, no obvious relationship between the data sets. So, an example might be uh, students' favourite colours and their exam results. Okay, we wouldn't expect that um, those sets of data to have any um, relationship to each other. Okay, so uh, that's correlation, positive, negative, and the strength of the relationships between.